Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new Let's Play on this channel. I'm the Ninja Stalker, and this is Panzer General 2. I played this game uh, a few days ago, and before that, actually quite a few years ago. I felt like coming back to this game. It's a pretty good game. I like it. I like this military history, strategic game planning thing going on. So, we're going to go through it. Now, I have played this before, and I've beaten the Western Allies campaign. Wasn't perfect, but it wasn't bad. Well, at least as far as I know, because I got, uh, yeah, the rank of colonel. So, it's whatever. It's good still. So, we will go through with campaign. Just drop the volume down a bit. We will go with the the Americans. It's not a preferential thing because I'm an American. I want to play the Americans. What I did in this campaign before, I had American troops, British troops. Worked out. And I used them both pretty pretty well. Pretty well. We'll go with this. The one thing I don't like is there's not a whole lot of campaign uh, missions within. It's like four, five, or six. That's not a whole lot. I was expecting like 10 to 20 or something, but nope, that's not the case. So we'll go with this. I don't understand what this is. I think this has something to do with the amount of prestige you get, but increasing it makes the enemies that you're up against, your opposition, a lot tougher because you get more funding to purchase more troops and equipment, supplies and stuff. They get tougher, and they, I think, in turn, get better equipment right from the start, whereas you have to deal with the time frame that you're coming in. Since we're going in in 1943, uh, initially we will be, we will have M4s, let me see, M4A1 Shermans are probably the best ones. There are regular M4 Shermans, I think they're regular M4 Shermans, I'm not sure. The point is, we don't have, like, uh, Persians yet. We don't have, I don't think they have patent tanks in World War II. Um, we, we don't have, uh, if anyone's played World of the Tanks, we don't have T-29s rolling around. You know, we don't have T-32s, M-103s, and stuff like that, you know? Now, that's that game. This is this game. Uh, there's a lot about this game I don't know. Like, supposedly, there's, uh, there's like an, uh, a manual for this game that's like over a hundred pages that explains about all the different types of tanks that you can get and their their stats and all that so I think there's a majority of tanks I'm missing in this game that I haven't gotten yet the way you get tanks in this game from my understanding is you have to get a brilliant victory in this game and the, the way the the victories go in this game is brilliant victory is the best you can get then there's uh, strategic victory and then there's tactical victory you know brilliant those ones you get if you can beat the game that level that you're on in a short amount of time like uh turns i should say the max amount of turns per level depends on the map but sometimes it'll be like oh as an example this map max amount of turns you get is 20 the and that'll be for tactical victory then for strategic victory if you can beat it in 15 you get a uh, strategic victory and then you'll get 10 or 8 turns to get brilliant victory and if you do that 
you get a special tank at the end, or a special something at the end of that map, to use in the next game, and then from then on you can keep that that piece of tank, or equipment, or whatever it is, you know. Uh, also, you get upgraded versions of current tanks that you have that you can modify. Them to, so. I could be wrong, but I'm, I know last time I played that the thing where it showed you, oh, I played as Ferris and I got the rank of Colonel, I got at least one t uh, brilliant victory and I was awarded an, an M29 tank, which I think is supposed to be the T29 heavy tank from World of Tanks. And then I also had the ability to upgrade any of my M4 Shermans to an M26. But it's not only just an upgrade, I was also able to purchase a brand new M26 anytime I felt like or wanted to, which was cool. But that was already like at the end of the game or some shit. I don't know. Pretty good tank though. Uh, so I, like, like, again, I don't really know much about this game. Like, I don't know how many tanks there are. Like, I wish there was a whole lot of tanks. Like, basically, if anyone's played World of Tanks, I wish there was that many tanks that you can have for your team, you know? Because some of them were blueprint tanks that never existed, but it'd be cool in this game if they had that. Like, in this game, they offered me the M29 because I got a brilliant victory. I don't know if that's a real tank, in all honesty. I thought that was the T29, and then there was a typo, but then I was like, well, this game came out before World of Tanks. So maybe World of Tanks calls their Tier 7 heavy tank the T29, and it's probably the M29 as well, just another name for it. I don't know, it, it looked like a Persian, but it also looked like a T29, because the T29 looks like a bigger Persian, you know? I wish it was something like that, you know, because it was pretty cool. I was like, oh wow, I wish there was like a bunch of other tanks, or I hope there's a bunch of other tanks I'm missing. Um, so yeah. Like, it'd be cool if you could play for the German side, and you can get the Louvre, or the, the low, the Louvre, the Lion tank, you know, because you have Tiger tanks. There's, there was also a, proto, a super heavy, there was a super heavy tank for the Germans that had a design, I think, by, I, I can't remember if it was Porsche or somebody else, Krupps or something, but they had a, a Louvre. And that was, I think that was a blueprint tank, but it was, it was a pretty big tank. It'd be cool if they had that in this game. Anyways. So, I have Commander, good to see you. Smoke? Here you are. Well, let's get down to business. American and British troops are to land at Salerno and to begin a second front against the Germans and knock Italy out of the war. Once you're ashore, you'll need to get your men off those beaches pronto. By the way, you should be aware that the Krauts have got a panzer division somewhere in the area. Good luck, Commander. Okay. So, they have tanks. And they have good ones, too. We have already a Stug, and I think that's an anti-tank. Yep, it's an anti-tank tank. It's got 15 on the damage. That's a lot better than any of ours at this current time. Our best tank so far is probably this M4A1. It's got a star there because there is a leader in it. That leader is Wallace. I think that's who we're going to be playing as. The last game you saw where it said Ferris and the rank was Colonel, my leader was Ferris. This time it's Wallace. He's in an M4A1. We have an M8, that's a scout car, M4A1, there's an M10, I believe the M10 is an anti-tank as well. Yeah, M10, anti-tank. Yep, there it is, anti-tank. M10. We have, we have a 105mm, that's pretty good again, yep, infantry. Artillery. Eight pieces, that's pretty good. It's pretty decent on fuel. It's got a range of four, that's good. We're going to want to bring this up here as soon as possible to get rid of these uh, troops. Now, they have regular troopers and they have Stolztruppens, which I'm not 100% sure. I'm not fluent in German at all, but I, I did take a, mil uh, a military history, well, not a military history class, but I, it was military. 
and it was history, so, you know, and basically I took a history class over at the university, and I think the Germans had a group of people that had a similar name to this, and I think when we translate it into English, it meant like stormtroopers. Now, I don't know if Stasstruppens is stormtroopers. Again, I'm not, I don't really know German too well. But that's what it seems like to me. So these are the stormtroopers. The Germans created that class of soldiers so that they can go in with the Blitzkrieg. They run in real fast, attack, engage, cause havoc. They go in with the tanks and all that. They're pretty, they're, they're badasses basically. So I mean, if you look at it, six, eight, eight and eight versus regulars, two, six, six, seven. These guys are much better armed and equipped basically. It shows that they have fuel, that means they are uh, transport, they have transport. Some troops won't have transports like these guys, they're just regular foot soldiers, ground pounders, so they'll walk a distance, that's why there's no fuel here. Their max distance will probably be about three, yep, three leg movement. Now that's good because, in a sense, you can always walk three distance, right? Everywhere you go, three distance, you'll never get tired, you can always move. These guys... If you run out of fuel and you make it to zero, they won't move. Not a single bit. Not even not even three spaces for like a normal soldier. It says leg movement three, that's not true. They they go based off of this, because that's what's happened to me before. At least from my side, as far as I know. I've had some troops that, that can move by uh, by transport and they wouldn't move a foot. They wouldn't move like a square over just cause. Now here we have our British soldiers up here. We have our Americans over here. And we also have three British over here. And we got a P-51 Mustang over here. This is the Bravo version. This is not the upgraded version. I think the best version is the P-51D or the P-51H. Uh, it's good enough. It's good enough. It's fine. What we're really going to want to focus on with the Americans are bombers. Bombers are real good. You're going to want... Uh, bombers for armor and bombers for uh, infantry troops on the ground. So you're going to want anti-armor and gunships. Americans have that pretty well. They got that down pat. The British are good with fighters, but their fighters don't have a lot of ammunition. The American fighters have a lot of ammunition, but their... I guess their air attack isn't as good. And they're probably not as not as well defended by the time you make it to the best type, you know. Uh, it's a 25 pounder. Oh no, wait, that's a 5.5 inch British 5.5 inch artillery. Uh, it's okay, I guess. But these are 20. Yeah, here are the 25 pounders. So what's the difference? 5, 13, 2. And 10. I mean, they're artillery. Not really great defense, but it's 13 over here. What do we have for you? 17. And I said this was 13. Yeah, alright, so we're gonna want this 5.5 inch and this 105 up here as soon as possible. What's your guys' range? 4 and you? 4, that's good. 3. Yeah, so if we can get them here and here, they can shoot about as far as these guys can. Not unless we can spread these guys out and put the 105 here or here and then the 5.5 here and here. Or here even because we want them again. You want your artillery to go after basically the infantry. Artillery is always good against infantry. You can try and use them against armor. It's to me personally playing this game a waste of ammunition, and you do have to watch for ammunition. Their, your ammo will go out. I mean, these guys have nine, but the bigger your guns, the less ammo you got. You see? So they just drop them. And they do have bigger ones than this. You got like uh, an 8 inch for the Americans, which is amazing. But you only got like 4 ammo or something. And then the, the British, I think they have a 7.2 inch or something like that. I don't know how much ammo it has. It probably has less or just as much. I don't know. But The distance, however, on those goes pretty far. They go like 5 spaces over or something. So it's, it's decent. But Alright, so we have... The British have set themselves up with the infantry up at the front, and then they got, they're guarding the artillery, which is good, but you have to watch out. Our guys aren't as experienced as these guys. So in this game, experience means a whole lot. If you have a group that doesn't have a whole lot of experience, like the Americans, for example, 
you're going to run into trouble against other troops, other vehicles, and stuff like that. The reason why they have it set up like this is, is to be historically accurate. During World War II, the Americans came into the war late. The only experience that they all got was from the African campaign, Operation Torch. As you can see here, they got marked for one. This is 1943, I believe in 1942, Operation Torch was greenlit and a go, and they went into uh, Africa and they started moving on up to Italy. Here we have those troops here, and you can see the Americans don't have as much experience. The British, however, have experience. Why? Because they've been in the war a lot longer. So it makes sense that they're going to have the experience. Uh, so yeah, what about these guys? They got Mark for two. Yeah, so these guys are coming in probably from the African campaign as well. Sherman three, Sherman threes. Sherman threes, these are good tanks. We got 12 for 12, 12 and 9 as my... 12 for 12, 12 for 9. Yeah, so the Sherman threes are pretty much the same as the, M1, uh, the M4A1s. The British will move on to upgrade their Shermans much differently from ours. Well, I mean, it's not much differently, but you'll notice a big difference. Uh, I think after this, the British can move on to the Fireflies, and there's also uh, the Challenger tanks. You got the Cromwells, the, uh, the Comets, and the Americans will upgrade their M4s extensively. Five inch over here. You, we need to move, but I need to watch out for shit over here. We have, let's see, regular soldiers, and then we have engineers. And then the British, they're all regulars. But here's the thing. I really don't like how they have the engineers pretty much better than the regulars. It didn't make much sense to me. So you can see six, seven, eight, nine, and then you look over here, four, six, six, and nine. That really doesn't make sense. I mean, it, in an aspect, I can understand. In a way, I can understand engineers are probably good against tanks. You know, they probably got the equipment to do such things. I don't know why, I don't know, that they couldn't make these guys better. I mean, look, seven, six and seven versus four and six. You'd think the regular troops are better at infantry than the engineers, where engineers are not really meant to be on the front line, so to speak. Even the even their defense, it, it kind of bugs me. So if you have a thing for engineers, you're probably not going to be enjoying this let's play because I'm not going to have engineers. I'm probably going to swap them out for something else or upgrade them to something else, which you can do, which is pretty cool. Any of your surviving troops that you have in this game moves on to the next game. Depend. I think it depends on how extensively you use them. For example, I'm not going to get any of the British troops in this game, in this map in the next game. The only British troops I'm going to be able to keep, I think, are the ones that I decide to, uh, what's it, re requisition, you know, add them to my own personal group. Because, let's see, field headquarters, this will show me what I all have on my side. So, the only British troops I get to have is this one, this one, so the two Sherman 3s, Five pounders, to 45, 25 pounders, and then I get. What are you? Inspect. I get regular. Oh wait, hold up. Am I mistaken? I must be mistaken. Hold up. Oh no, wait, no, 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 no. This, this might be something else. This might be the troops. This might be all the troops that I have this game. Never mind. Uh, what, I was, what I was talking about, though, you don't get to keep everyone from this game to the next. You only get to keep a few of them. So, anyone, any ones that you do purchase, however, from your uh, prestige. So, we have 1,100 prestige. Any ones you do purchase from now on, you get to keep unless they die that map, that round that you were in. So, any ones that you buy and pick, you better make sure they survive. Uh... I really do wish they offered a lot more than what I see here, you know? Another thing that bugs me about this uh, game is the troops. There are no upgrades. There's just, here are all the troops. These are all the ones you can move to. So immediately off the bat, you can upgrade them. Well, not that 
not immediately off the bat, but the next round, the next mission you go to, if you have any uh, troops that you want to upgrade, you could do it right then and there. There's not like, oh, you got rangers? You know what? We got uh, the next best rangers, you know, ranger twos or special forces or, or deltas or something. You get what I'm trying to say. They probably didn't have them then, but you understand what I'm trying to say. The only things that you really have upgrades for are like artillery, anti-tanks, air defense, scouts, tanks, the, everything else but infantry, which bugs me. I like having infantry. Infantry actually do have a pretty good thing going on for them. Uh, up here, since we have allies, the UK is pretty much it, so we get to purchase supplies from the, uh, from the United Kingdom and from the USA. So. One thing I do like from the United Kingdom on their infantry side is they have Australians. I don't know if you guys know, I love Australia. Never been there, but I always felt like a longing to go to Australia, visit Australia, live in Australia. I don't know if that's ever going to happen because I, mean, I live in America and I think the, uh, what's it, the visiting, how do you call it? The ability to live over there is kind of impossible. Someday, maybe I might find some way, but I mean, the UK, Australia, one of the two places I would love to actually live and have a home. It'd be pretty cool. But anyways, they have Australian troops. That is fucking awesome. What I hate is that they have two on the tanks, six on the infantry, which is not bad, but there are better ones, and six and seven. Eh. So what I end up doing is I purchase these guys for cheap, as you can see they're on the 132, and then if they survive, I upgrade them to either paratroopers or commandos. And the upgrades doesn't cost as much, see, these guys are 204, these guys are 228, so when you upgrade it's probably like a fraction of the cost, so it'll probably be like in the hundreds or something, I don't know. Uh, the UK, they have engineers as well, commandos, paratroopers, Gurkhas, bridgings, Royal Marines, Australians, Canadians, Indians, uh, New Zealanders, New Zealanders, regulars, home guard, and that's pretty much it. US, you have engineers, rangers, paratroopers, marines, bridgings, mountains, regular, and national, or national guard, I guess. So yeah. I do split the forces up, I'll have, I'll focus half of U.S. and half of uh, the United Kingdom. They'll have, each side has their own uh, anti-air, anti-tank, artillery, infantry, you name it, that's what I usually do. Uh, I try to be even with it. I try not to have one side having too many tanks and the other side has like too many this or that, you know, but sometimes things can't be fixed. Uh, let's see. What, 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 what can we do? We have our tanks. And the tanks are not going to be good against infantry. There are some tanks that are good against infantry. We don't have those at this point in time. We have just average even tanks, which is okay, but when you have it like this, you'll want them to be against tanks. Except for that tank. This is an anti tank. You're going to have to do something else. You're gonna have to soften anti tanks up with uh, something else, which I have in mind what, but we'll have to see. Here's the scout, we'll have to do something with him. Here's our anti tank, who's probably yep, as good as theirs. He's for 11. Here's ours for 10, so he's more armed up, so you gotta watch out for him. Not only that, he's got experience. You have to be careful uh, having your troops die against these other troops because they can level up too and when they level up and they gain experience sometimes they can gain a leader who can give them traits uh, as you can see here click here here's our leader Wallace battle honors we haven't won any uh, campaign levels yet but here are the traits you have aggressive maneuver and you have That's, that's odd. I got two aggressive maneuvers. Huh. That's the that's the game's RNG, you know, random number generator that it just pops up. Hey, you got this number, that number goes into this, and this number goes into this. I got two aggressive maneuvers. 
I don't know what they do. I don't have a manual. Uh, I could look it up online at some point, but uh, apparently we got two aggressive maneuvers. If you ask me, I think that's a waste. We'll see what happens with that, though. It might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. I, I seriously doubt it's a good thing, though. Uh, hmm. Ooh, we got an M7 Priest. He is... Uh, I thought he was going to be good against tanks, but I should have known better. Our F7 Priest is going to be good against infantry, so we're going to want him... Uh, Oh, excuse me, I yawned. For 12, 11... Well, that's for against armor. Well, that's ground defense, actually, so I don't know if that counts for close defense. Where are you? Also, you gotta be careful with moving them a distance. Like, you see right here how it turns into a truck and here it doesn't? This is the three steps that it, he can move. Um... by foot, right? Anything further, he goes to a truck. Trucks don't have a lot of armor. As you can see, uh, inspect. inspect. Here it is down here. So here's their armor when they're infantry. Here's their armor when they're in a, a truck. This is one of the type of trucks you can get. The M3A1. Well, surprisingly, he's got more ground armor, but his air armor is shit. He's got better close defense armor. Range modifier isn't as good. I don't know what the range modifier is. It's got these stats though because it's this truck. There are some infantry that don't have that great of a truck though. Let me see if I can find it. Nope, not you. I know one of you's got to have this shit. Yeah, there we go. Here's the regular truck. One zero zero one six nine zero eight. So this truck is like you got to be careful with these guys with these trucks. I think the infantry with the other truck, though, the M3A ones, they can fight back, but the ones with the other trucks, they can't. They'll have to jump out and shoot or something. I don't know. You'll, you'll, you'll see. You'll see. Alright, now, how, how, how this? you can actually move all the way up here. Or I can move up here. And then I can have the 5.5. Ooh, the 5.5 isn't going to go that far. I can have him move here, and he can probably shoot this far. I don't know. Let's... Where can you go? You can move here, but they're probably going to spot you. Also, this flag has a square around it. That's one of the main capture points. You want to capture all the ones with those. So, we need to capture this one. We need to capture these two. This one up here. I think that's it. All the other ones you don't have to capture, but I think you get prestige uh, for capturing them. So, you get a lot more points. Which I like that can help in the next mission. Let's... What can we do? Well, I'm going to want to move you for sure. Where do I want to move you so you can do the most amount of damage? How much ammo do you have?
this is this 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 is some tough stuff. I mean, like I know I played this a few days ago. It's just every time you have to think of something new. You, you want you want to be careful where you choose and put your uh, your pieces, so to speak, your troops, your equipment, your tanks, because you want to make the best out of that one move. Because once you move that one individual, you can't move them again unless there are special things like the the M8 scouts. You can sometimes move them more than once. You can sometimes move them three times. It depends on the situation. Guys like these, though, you can move them once. Mostly everyone else, you move them once. You know, you move them a distance. You got to be careful, and you want to put them in the best strategic position that can do the most amount. That way, you can get prestige coming your way. You know, this early on in the game. There's, you can say there's room for error, but I like to say there is not room for error because I like to think a step ahead. These guys, you're going to keep for the next level. So if they end up dying here or if they end up not doing great in this level, they're going to be less experienced going to the next level. You want to put your pieces or your individuals, your troops, you want to put them in a place that's going to help and benefit you for the next level, you know? Because the next the level you go to, that's the next year. That's the next year that comes in. The Germans are going to have better equipment and better uh, experience going along, you know? You're going to eventually run into King Tiger tanks, you know? And that's a problem, you know? You don't want to run into a King Tiger and you got, like, M4-1s, you know? You got a M4-A-1s, you know? You're going to have a run, you run into a problem there. So... Where do I want to put you? 16, 17, 15. Well, you know what? If that's the case, you, I want you here. Now, sometimes when you move, you can cancel a move, see? So you can cancel, you can go back. I don't think that, no, that doesn't cost you anything. But you want to be careful doing that. Uh, so there, put him there, I want him there. Uh, Our priest. It doesn't say it's an M7. It, it doesn't say that it's a priest, but I played World of Tanks, and I think, if I remember, I mean, I played World of Tanks a long time ago, but I think the M7 is an M7 priest. It's an artillery piece, so, or an SPG, I should say. We shall put the priest right here. And see, they can't fire. These, they're all individuals that, once they move the artillery, you have to wait the next turn to uh, engage. I think the next turn, the Germans can move, and then he can attack. But pieces like this, Artie, once he they move and he's in a truck, uh, excuse me, in a truck, he can't even re-engage to defend himself. He'll have to move or just get destroyed. The priest, however, the M7, he moves and I can't attack. But once they're moving and attacking, he can actually help defend the troops or defend himself. That's a plus for SPGs, but sometimes SPGs, uh, there's an issue with them that's not as good as uh, the actual art artillery pieces. And I think uh, the negative is that they can't shoot as far as artillery pieces. These guys might be on par for now, but the upgraded version of uh, these artillery pieces versus the SPGs is that they can shoot farther and probably do more damage. So that's the thing to look for. Uh, let's see. The M10, I... Actually, let me see. If I move you here, he won't be able. Yeah, he won't be able to shoot you. But you can defend. Where can you go, though? I need a member. I need to remember about you. So move there, please. That way, these infantry can stay back, and then I can move you again if you need to be moved. Right now, you. I want you. Here, you safeguard. Uh, artillery pieces. Okay, so now we have a buffer zone. We have this opening here. He could just come in and try to attack the M7 priest, but he's going to get engaged by this guy, this guy, this guy, uh, this guy. Yeah, so he'll be attacked by like five people. He, he'll be suppressed. If he doesn't take damage from any of these guys, he will be severely suppressed, and that means when it's my go to re engage, He's fucked. Now, you. I want you. Here's our main tank. We 
want our main tank to actually uh, do some good. Move there, and I, yeah, you have a range of one. I see that they have a PSW here, and that's a scout car, I believe. Yeah, that's a recon scout car. He doesn't have a whole lot of armor, even though he's very well experienced. He doesn't have, well, actually, he's pretty decently armored. But I, he can't engage in return, so that's his, that's his fault. And that'll be an easy kill for our M4. And we also have our M3, or excuse me, our Sherman 3. How about, let me see, what are you, 8 and 6, what are you, 7 and 6, but I do more damage, or I can't do more damage, but it also depends on the experience level, he's at a 3, I'm at a 1, so that's going to be some difficulty right there. I could engage him with this 25 pounder, but again, these guys are more meant for uh, infantry than tanks. Sure, it'll be five, but as you can see here, I only get zero for one. That all now that also counts accounts in for uh, his entrenchment. He has an entrenchment, as you see down at the bottom right. It says ENT uh, to zero. His entrenchment is zero. That means he's only just gotten to that position. He hasn't been entrenched yet. Our infantry have been entrenched for two. Their infantry has been entrenched, for, yeah, for five. So you know, go figure. So. That, his entrenchment is zero, but still, as you can see, since his entrenchment is zero, that means he just moved there, it's easier to attack and destroy him. But since our 25 pounder is meant for infantry, this is what you get, a result of zero to one. Now, that doesn't mean every time you click, he's going to lose one. Sometimes, based on random number generator, he can lose more or he can lose nothing at all. That's, that's, the, that's the reality of it. So what you want to move in position are anti-tanks, uh, any tank tanks or just any tank artillery pieces, uh, regular tanks, stuff like that. So, our M8, where do I want to move our M8? I kind of want to move up here and see what's going on, because I, I think last time I played this, I remember there was some crazy shit up here. Crazy shit going up here. If I had to guess, I think there's also a Tiger tank in here somewhere, since our our general or whoever is in charge of me, and I'm the commander of the forces here, uh, told me that there are some panzer forces in the area. This isn't exactly a panzer tank. I mean, it kind of is, but it's not like the panzer tank he's trying to alert me about. It. You know, if you're a commander and then they tell you, hey, we got panzer tanks in the areas, you're immediately going to think, all right, shit, we got different types of panzer threes, uh, maybe Panzer IVs, we're probably going to have a, a Tiger tank somewhere, and maybe even Panther tanks, maybe, you know, but definitely there's going to be one Tiger somewhere, and I think there are Tigers somewhere. The thing that I see that's a concern right now is a Stug 3, and it's a Stug 3G, you know, that's one of the good ones right there, so that's uh, worrisome right there, but we will have a way to get rid of them, don't you worry. In the meantime... Let me see. Actually, as a matter of fact, you know what? We're going to save. Now, as you can see, I made a lot of saves in my previous games. Yeah. So, we're going to go with AUS. I put it back for Australia, because, again, I like Australia. You know, I'm American. I mean, I like America, but I also like Australia. I like to... Again, like I said before, I like to visit and live there someday. And I'm, that reminds me, you know, oh yeah, Australian troops. I got them. Last game, uh, the last time I played, I at least had one Australian troops, and then I upgraded them to paratroopers, and then I think I had uh, commandos. But, hey. So, Australia, yes. We'll have our M8 here. Okay, so he doesn't spot anyone else. He 
he's got a viewing range of four, and within four hexes, there's no one else but this stupid little guy. So, what are you? You are not good against hard attacks, but soft attacks. Hmm. That means we can capture this area and this area, since he's the only one in the area. But you. I'm gonna have our main tanks, the Sherman 3 and the M4, move up around in this area. There's, good, there's definitely gonna be some stuff. Like, I'm not gonna go this far and this far with our main tanks. I'm gonna have our Sherman 3 and our M4A1 swing this way to go over here, because I'm pretty sure this spot, there's, there's gonna be a Tiger tank there. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a Tiger tank. Now, here I can have our scout versus their scout. But you can see that there's a one for one right there. I'll lose one, he'll lose one. I could lose more than one, he can lose more than one. I could lose zero and he can lose more than one. You see what I'm trying to say. This is just like a statistic average, you know, like this is what it, the battle's gonna look like. Again, anything can happen though. So what I could do is have R25 pounder drop a shell on him. We won't lose anything because he can't attack us from that distance. He can lose nothing at all, or he can definitely lose one or more. If that's the case, our M8 can engage him if he doesn't decide to retreat because of the attack. Because sometimes, sometimes you can hurt them enough that they're like, fuck this shit, I gotta, I gotta dip on out. Then he won't be able to engage. But sometimes they'll stick put and then you can re-engage. And this number where it says one for one, We'll say 0 for 1 or 0 for 2, just because I had somebody else attack and suppress them, you know? Since his entrenchment is at a 0, there's a good possibility that this can be pretty, you know, this can look pretty well good for us. Um, since their viewing range is 4, I can move our British troops or our British allies into positions. So he can come around this way and get here and engage, and he can come over here and engage. Which I'm thinking of doing. So, we'll go ahead and save. Right. We'll save there. Now, let's see. What else do we want to do? We have an M4 over here. I can move this M4 here to make sure no one fucks with our artillery. There will be better M4s that can have a range of two, though, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we'll have him there. This way, if he had in mind to come in here and try to shoot the M7, he won't. He'll have to go up against him, but this time he'll have an extra gun attacking him because he'll step right here to the way below. Okay, because he has a range of two. That's fine. It'll be against this guy. He's more armored than the, uh, the priest. So that's fine. He'll he'll take some damage from this guy, but everyone's gonna pretty much well these two and maybe him is gonna like engage him. So there's a plus. Our infantry over here. Let's. See. I can't upgrade them now. I cannot upgrade them now. I can purchase soldiers though to move out over here. And I think that's what I want to do, because these are regular troops. They are not good against uh, strong points or pillboxes, because at every one of these, what I remember for this level, there are like pillboxes, or strong points as they call them, little fortifications, and they will screw up infantry, like really bad, regular soldiers, real bad. I don't know about the engineers. Engineers, they might be okay. As for our P-51, I want to move you into position. Let's move you here. Because you have the 105 here, you have the M7 here, you have the 5 inch here. He won't be able to defend the 5 inch, but he'll, do, he'll be able to defend the M7 and the uh, 105. So, he'll stay put there. We have our 
infantry here. I, I really don't want to use them. I, I mean, like, I should, but... What I have in mind for these guys is to go this way. The infantry that I really will be using are these guys, but I'm not going to be able to keep them. So, I mean, it'll make sense for me to move these soldiers on up. Like, I also wish that they had like upgrades for your troops as well so like if you kept them wild that these things move up in, in rank or something Look over here, we're gonna want some bombers. We have you, and then we have you. Okay, so we have the B26C and then the A20. 
So the A20 is your anti-armor. B26C is your anti-infantry, it's your gunship. armor or the other one. What would I be able to get right now that's pretty good? There's a 155 millimeter I can get. Compared to the 105, it's pretty damn good. It's got less ammo. I'll keep the 105 and just upgrade it instead of purchasing this because this is quite a bit. Recons, we got an M8, we got this. Porsche, we got an M4A3 we can get. Where are you? Where are you? Alright, so for the M4A3, you sacrifice a bit of armor for more against infantry. So, if we get this, we can now have a M4 that goes up against infantry uh, specifically, and then our M4A1 is just a more armored version. Cost 276. Considering that, we might get an M4A3 and then we'll just have them r just destroy infantry. It's not by much. Some of you are probably looking at it like, well, I mean, it's just by one and you lose a bit of armor, but uh, I think it's good. As for the Mustang, or for the airplanes, air fighters, we got Let's go over here. What do we have? We have Spitfires. Spitfire 9 and Spitfire 12. 640. get one of those at some point. But, you see the ammo? Four. Fucking four. A Spitfire 1. Even though he does 12, he's cheaper. He doesn't have as much armor, but he gets a whole lot of ammunition, so he can be in the sky a lot longer than these Spitfires, which is a issue. It's a it's a real big problem. These guys are good, but you're only in the air for like you know to engage four times and then that's it. I can purchase this and then upgrade him later if I wanted to. He might not have the best, but as long as he starts getting experience, that's what counts. We're probably going to need some air defense. Yeah, 40 millimeter, probably. It's got a range of three, but it's not really going to stay put. Or he's not really going to, like, engage immediately. What about you? We have three inch, so we got you. For a range of two. Or... Consider a hard target. Huh. Seven, six, fifty-seven, hard target. Eight, eight, soft target. Huh. That's interesting. I might go for this one. This guy can travel further, and I need that. That's what I need. He got for 10, and you are for 11. Oh, but you can do... Two, nine, two, six. Shit. I guess that's why it's a hard target. It's got more armor than this thing. I don't know. 252. 
two. 204. And this one's cheaper. Fuck, I might have to go for this one instead. Shit. Right, uh. Okay, so what do we want? Do we want a gunship? Or do we want armor? So here's the armor. Here's the gunship. This one is just an all average. And shit. Oh boy. We have armor. And then we have gunship. If I go for the gunship, I'm probably gonna get the B26B and then upgrade it later on. Because the only difference is like a little bit of armor, just for a little extra pay. I'd have to go with the A20 because I'm still thinking about that stug. That stug is an issue, I tell you. Let's get you. Now, how much do I have? I got 452 left. Okay. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, see, these are the. This is the British uh, fighter uh, fighter bombers, or just bombers, tactical bombers. Look at their stats. They're just. The only good one is the Buell Fighter. that it's taking so long for me to do certain things. <laughs> but, uh... You can also purchase them with a truck or a Bren carrier, or nothing at all. You can just keep them as foot soldiers. If you do with the trucks and stuff, it's gonna cost. So you gotta be careful with that. Also, there's a fuel thing now. And when your uh, fuel goes down, that means you pretty much have to uh, stop and then have them resupply, which will take a turn, you know. So as you can see, the brain carrier doesn't go as far on fuel. They go the same distance, wheeled movement, but the brain carrier offers...
dice can do more damage. Heart attack. Nine, eight, which are armored against air. Naval, but I mean, I don't really think there's any naval. You guys, however, get more ammo. And that is a good decision, I think. Oh, and then we got tanks. I forgot about this for the British. We have Churchill, Churchill, Churchill Ford, Churchill Three, Shermans, Matildas, Valentines. Eight for three, ten for five. 12 for 7. Shermans are 12 for 12. 12 14 and 11. 12 this guy is more armored up. And he's meant for tanks. He doesn't have as much fuel and he doesn't travel as far though. This one's worse. Valentine's is even worse. Huh. Gotta get a Churchill at some point. The Churchill tank would be pretty good. It's gonna have to be that Churchill four. Oh, and then we got the scouts. And I only got one scout. I like to have like two or three scouts at a time because it's very helpful. There's so much I want to do! Alright, so first, well, we definitely need, we definitely need this A-20 to go up against the armor. I'm gonna need troops, or a troop, to deal with the strong, strong boxes towards the right of the map that I was showing earlier. I don't remember which one does it, though, which one is pretty good at, at dealing with those. Boxes, but it's just a matter of which one do I want. And I'm probably going to give them the brain carrier so that I don't lose them. That way they can actually move around further than just three, three spaces at a time, you know? You have more ammo. You have this. You have fewer brains. And you also have initiative. But I don't know what initiative does. Heart attack. Less on the defense. You know what? Let's go with the commandos and give them the brain carrier. Put that over there. We have 80 now. So it's pretty much it. I have to get more points. You go there. You go right there. Start making your way down south. You. What is the. Hold up. Map. Nope, that ain't it. That. That ain't it. weather so that means our planes will be able to engage okay so you you can attack the air but so you over there 
So see, it's one for four. Can anybody engage you and actually do something? No. Alright, so it's just you. Go ahead and do it. Okay, so we haven't lost any bit of health. That's pretty good. He's lost some health, though. He's probably going to retreat after this, at, uh, which is, I guess is good. We don't have to worry too much. We've only got the infantry to think about. Okay, so he's doing his thing. Uh, I get point? No, I still have to wait for the turn to finish. You make your way up. There. See here, he can now do one for three. So, let's do that. Let's take advantage. I lost out. Well, that sucks. It sucks. You saw that though, right? It was one for three. I was the only one who lost out. He didn't lose anything. I hate that. This game, I swear, does some bullshit. Right, so, uh... Oh, you can do two on him. Alright, we'll do that. Oh, uh, you know why? It's because he's a regular troop and these are Stoss troopins. Yeah, regular troops, they're gonna... They're not as good. These guys took one, these guys... See, their entrenchment was for fives, now it's down to four. Because they were suppressed. Now, I can have the British troops move up, but these guys are still more experienced than them. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're never going to lose experience, but the thing is, I'm not going to have level 2 versus level 3s and their Stoss Troopins. 2 for 6 versus 6 for 8, it ain't going to work out. Even though, excuse me, even though he did just go down uh, the amount, hit he's 9 and I'm 10, that don't mean shit. Like, he would have to be 5 or less for me to even think about bringing 10s up against them that are, like, less of experience. These guys are just regular troopers, you know? They're, they're not gonna fare against Stoss Troopins. So, we'll just hold these guys here. Let them come to us. Besides, we got our artillery that can help them out. What I can do is I, move, I can move you, but I 
but I don't know if he's gonna stay put or not. I need you here, and that means... Yeah, that means we effectively increased our firing range. And this is a hill, but it's going to take a while to get through this hill to get to him. So we'll do that. This, uh, this I think it's a maneuver that the British did during World War One and Two. They called it the, uh, the Creeping Barrage. You'll have a set of artillery in the back, and they'll shoot their, uh, they'll shoot their shells at a distance, right? Maximum effective range. And then the infantry follow the shells while engaging their infantry uh, from being like demoralized and decimated by the uh, the infantry strikes from their uh, their own side. As that is happening, these guys move up closer and shoot the shells behind, making a new maximum effective range uh, past the area that they have just hit. So his maximum range is four. He was able to hit him, or him, he was able to hit him, right? So now he increases his effective range, so now he can get anyone behind him. These guys can move up, not worry about, you know, taking crazy damage up close, you know? Helping the artillery, you know, get some space, and they move forward, you know? Even though I didn't move our infantry forward, there's a reason. It's because these guys are pretty good. They're going to take, they need to take more shell damage from our uh, artillery. So it's going to take some time. Uh... Go ahead and save and see what happens. Fair weather, okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, so he moved, he moved. They have artillery that just engaged our infantry. Our artillery just engaged him. He didn't lose any health from that. I can get the M4A3. I can get that. I cannot get any fighters, I don't think. Nope, I need 456 for you. I don't think I can get Churchill, nope. I don't think there's going to be any more planes after this one, though, in all honesty. I'll think about that some other time. He is not going to do good because that plane is still there, so... You need to, uh... Back. And then the next turn, have him stay and then resupply or re, uh, rearm. He'll get more from 4 to 10 basically, which is what I'm trying to say. That's part of the resupply, but to me it sounded more like 4 ammunition. You get my point. You. Right there. You. Right there. Okay. So we got a small auxiliary force over here doing their thing. They're going to move around and get rid of all this shit. Five is right here. He can engage that. I don't want him to for two. Okay, so you can engage him. You can definitely engage him. Capture that. Okay. 
but I think we saw that there was uh, artillery over here somewhere. So... Let's see. File, save. I do a lot of save, because I don't want to, like, fuck up. You there. So what we have is a Panzer III N, and then there's a Tiger tank. The Tiger tank's marked at 5, the Panzer III N is marked at a 5 as well. The Tiger tank, however, has a leader in it, as you can see, and he's a level 3. He's got aggressive maneuver, and he's got skilled reconnaissance. That's an issue. You, what are you? You're in a tank. him, but you still for one, so go ahead. Okay, so now he's at a six, but we're at a five. You, come in and, uh, fuck him up. That was terrible. You saw that, right? Artillery can reach. Four. Uh, I don't even increase them. Let's see. Regular troops. Fuck him up, please. guys. Now this, what is this? This is a 15 SF-18. He has a range of 4, so I don't know that. He's good against infantry. He's okay against tanks, but he's mostly infantry. So, what we gotta do is send in our tanks to go to a bomb. Or we can send in our bomber over there. have to see if there's any anti-air in the area though. There might be, but I'm not sure. Alright, let's see. What can we do with this? Also, artillery is good against other artilleries. I think I'm, I'm not sure on that. You. Up. Oh, there it is, right there. There's the flak. So, bringing in He's probably going to retreat. So now that I know he's there, four for one, uh, let's move our artillery up.
finally move your ass right here. These guys will go this way, swinging this way, these guys are swinging this way, and the four, these guys will move forward and stuff. Uh, hmm. You guys are already there. How much? 320. I can get something, but what do I want? Churchills is they just don't travel as far. And that's because they're infantry support tanks. They're not really meant to go too far. The Churchill 3 can go farther though. 10 for 5 versus 12. He's got the same armor as the Sherman. But the Sherman can out. What else do we have? Come on. Let's see. We can get more infantry if we wanted. I can get a bishop, but uh, three, three, four, four. All right. Let's just uh, save and wait and see. Show me what you guys got. Alright, so it's on fair. We're still good. We're airworthiness. Your plane decided to be a bitch. Alright. We didn't lose anyone yet. We have a problem over here though. This infantry is getting pounded by their artillery. Alright, so you can engage, but that'll be for zero. You can engage, that's for zero. You can engage, but you're probably gonna die. You can engage. If I get rid of that, what about you? Yeah, we need to get rid of that. That way our P-51 can engage. And we can send in our uh, our bomber. Go ahead. We need to destroy that. Six. So... 
especially Stoss and Stoss Troopers. That's going to be an issue. So I don't want to move them here because then he's just going to shoot. My intention was to have him or him come here and engage this infantry, right? But the problem is, since they're not really good against infantry, they're going to get hit by the Stoss Troopers and they're going to get hit by this uh, artillery piece. Yeah, we can probably have this episode do something. 12 for 12, 12 on 9. Yeah, he can engage. Alright, so... Two. Yeah, that's because he's going to take uh, hits from him. Give it a try, man. Let's see what happens. Because it's a cheat that you can do. You can like travel here and see if there's anyone there. If there's, if there is, if there's not, you can decide if you want to move in. So let's travel here and see if there's anyone. And there is. All right. If we would have ran into that, that would have hurt us real bad. British troops. Moving on up. Actually engage this guy. And you'll take fire from the artillery piece, but at least he will be weak. Gonna try. One for two. Yeah, that's worth it. Four for two. Six for 
one. Yeah, see, his changed because there's another artillery piece. We have a range of four, though. I don't know about that. Six for one, six. Zero. Five turns left for brilliant victory, ten turns for regular victory, and uh, fourteen for tactical victory from this point. Okay, so he's running off like a bitch. He destroyed that one infantry group that was just on one health. He shot somebody and killed the shit. Eighteen. Brought him down. Alright, so we sadly lost one of the British uh, forces. So, that's shit. Can you engage? Oh, you can! Dude, get up in there and do something. Way to go! Get in there! British troops. Uh, you guys... Yeah, you guys are gonna take forever to get over there, so... Come back over here. You can attempt to engage him, but there's somebody over here that's pissing me off, I'm telling you. You can actually come here and fuck him up. Stuff's troopers are right there. If we had a gunship. Five for two. Four. That's actually pretty good. What about three for three? back and cheat on the save, but just, just please fucking destroy it. Yes! I think that was an overrun too, which means he can now move and engage again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the case. Drop bombs. Yeah. Now you can engage for three. Uh... I can move you here and you can engage these guys from far. Yeah. And that means I can move you here. I can move. Oh no, because we got a fucking party hiding over here somewhere. We need to get rid of him. What? You know what? I... I... 
Ay, 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 I have some idea. Let's save. We got a plan. We have a plan, people. We'll move you here, and we can spot, yeah, we can spot him now. We won't engage just yet, because it's not going to make sense for him to engage, but he gets shot by two artillery pieces. However, we can send our bomber to come over here and fuck- Ah, oh, we can't! We can't. He can, however, engage this artillery piece. Alright, what about you? be all right. Okay, so bombard. All right, so there's no anti-aircraft. Good. And you, you see what I'm saying? It said that he was gonna do three, and ends up he he does just one damage. Unfucking believable. You, I guess, engage and.
guys are getting some experience that way. Oh, but you are running out of fuel. Very experienced for taking that out, man. Wait, what did that count as? The fill box doesn't count as anything. You guys are going to need some fuel pretty soon, though. Alright, so we did that. We had some, uh... Alright, so I can either have you save. Okay, engage please. And I lost the one. So press for two. You do the same please. Suppress so the two. How much money do I have? 516. Okay. What do we want to get at this point? What do we want? What do we want? We got the M4A3, which I was considering getting, which I still am because, as you can see, it does more damage to infantry, so this will be my tank that I go to to engage infantry. And then the other tanks I can use for everything else. Later on, the tanks do start getting better. Uh, more specific, like, you can actually use a tank more specific for tanks, other tanks, and then you can use this one more specific for infantry, if you catch what I'm trying to say. What do we have? Fighters. Do I have money for fighters? I think I do. I can get a P40F. P40F. What about a P50? Nope, that's too much. I can't get any of these. Oh, another fighter. Father to father. Another fighter would be helpful. Helpful though, though. Uh, uh, another fighter. I'm still fucking up the word. Oh, but I can get the Spitfire. I can get this one or this one. Fire one. Alright, so it's two, two, eleven, eight, eleven, seven. Eleven, sixteen, seven, eight, eleven, sixteen, seven, eight, eleven, sixteen, seven, eight, ten, sixteen, six. This one's for four fifty six. Four fifty six. But I think the Spitfire one does more damage against aircraft. I think, right? Yeah, he does twelve. The other one does. Fire one would be better. Plus, then I, later on I can upgrade them for a small cost to something else, you know. There was a Churchill tank I was thinking of getting, so if I get the Churchill now, I won't be able to get the Spitfire. The issue with the, the Churchill as well is that uh, his, his distance, his track movement is shit, it's three. That's about as much as uh, infantry on leg movement when they're not uh, with a transport of some type. Churchill 3 can go a little bit further though. But the Churchill 3 in comparison to other tanks like the normal M4s is less than average. They do 12 for 12 as you can see here. 12 for 12 on the M4A1 and then the M4A3 is 12 for 13. Is 
chill. It was 12 and 9, or 10 for 5, and uh, 12 for 7. But their armor rating is 12 for 9 and 14 for 11 versus the M4s on 12 for 9 and 11 for 9. So they just have the same amount. 12 for 9, 10 for 5. This tank was meant to be up in your face, shooting at other tanks. The issue is, it's going to take a while to get in front of tanks. It's going to take a while. That that three on the movement really does piss me off. Five is not bad, or excuse me, ten is not bad, especially considering the distance available for while armor is the same you can probably use the Churchill to do the last punch you know it's gonna be not a strong punch but it's gonna be the last punch you know if you if you're looking to upgrade your Churchills this that's the way to do it you're just gonna have to come in and make the last punch you know I'm actually considering getting a Churchill 3 and not a Churchill 4, which is actually a bug. This is not going to be strong out in the field. Not against infantry. <laughs> and not against tanks. He's, he's, uh... I'm going to have to hope that I do enough damage to the tank. Suppressing him, shooting him up and shit. I mean, I could get this guy, but that fucking movement... Uh, now, I had this tank last time, but I, I ran into the problem that the Churchill tanks are only good at the beginning of the battle. Once the game starts going through, he's one of those last ones to make it to any, any other tank doing any kind of damage. So in that regard, you probably want to look for tanks that have a movement of like, yeah, see, the Sherman 3 has a movement of 5. Anyone else have a better movement? The Stewart has a 7. Valentine has a 3, Crusader has a 5. Crusader does 13, huh? Yeah, but he's shit against infantry. How is he crap against infantry? It's a Crusader! Wait, hold up. 12 and 9. Hold, hold up. I can get a Crusader. Ah, oh, but his armor's not as good, though. His armor's not as good, because he'll have more than a, a regular... On hard attack against other tanks, the Crusader 3 will have 13 instead of 12, like the Shermans. But his defense... His defense is not good, but he can go far, and he's got ammo. The Grant. The freaking Grant. The M3 Lee. Because the, uh, what's it, the British, the UK, when they received the M3 Lee, M3 Lees, they renamed them the Grants and they gave them different guns. But, 9 on 10. like early World War II's. I could probably pick up the Crusader. He'll have the punch. He will have the punch against tanks. His armor isn't going to hold up as much, but he ha he'll have the distance. He'll have the ammunition. Oh, no way. Never mind. He almost has as much ammunition. The thing is, he'll have the punch. That's what counts. He's just not as armored up. But he can travel. So I can either get a Crusader 3, a Churchill 4, or a Churchill 3.
Crusader's got more armor against aircraft. I don't see how. Oh god, why did I do that? <laughs> My poor phone. New. <laughs> nope. I was like, oh, which one of these two tanks? Can I get both tanks? Or 12, 13, 11, and 9. Versus 12, 7, 14, 11. Or. Well, I do have Shermans. I do already have Sherman 3s, and I haven't lost one yet. Ah, oh, but I'd like to get a freaking Churchill. I love Churchill, man. Why they gotta be so crap? They got the armor. They got the armor, but they don't have the fucking distance. And they don't have the freaking power. Like, come the fuck on. Why couldn't these Churchills have the 17-pounder gun? Why do they gotta have these shitty 75 or 76-millimeter guns, you know? Better yet, why do they gotta be shit against infantry? Didn't some of the Churchill tanks have flamethrowers on them, you know? Son of a bitch. Because I know the Churchill tanks have the, t uh, the turret with the main armament on it, and then they also have the... Uh, the chassis, right? The main hull with a main armament on it as well, you know? So you'd have a 75mm on the turret, and then you have a 75mm right here on the chassis. Or a flamethrower attachment or something, I don't know. 8, 3, This guy. I know this is taking forever, you can more than likely skip on through, I mean, but we gotta figure this out. We want something good. I'm thinking the M4A3 is one of the things we can use, because it's got infantry in mind, and it can do, you know, it can go up against tanks decently well. It's got okay armor, nothing compared to the Churchill, but it's something. And if you can go further than the M4A1, that's looking mighty fine there. Oh, and this is this as well. So I guess I was out of my fucking mind. It was me. Oh, no. Uh, bombers. What about a gun? Nope, I don't have the money for a gunship. If I save up the next round, like if I don't purchase anything right now, sure, but... Save up for a gunship, which I appreciate. I pretty much get this one. He's cheaper than this one by a little bit. B26B. Or I can get this guy. 
Now, some of you are probably thinking, like, oh, you know, yeah, you could get the M4A3, which will go a distance of six, but you can also get this guy, save up to get this guy, and he can move up to uh, 16, you know? Yeah, but, like, he doesn't have much ammunition. 13 in comparison. And then he has to worry about flak, you know? And he's expensive as shit. I want it all. I want it all. Four defense infantry for thirteen. Or we can get this bomber for You know what, we'll just save up for the next round for that bomber. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Alright, no one else. Uh, end of turn. Let's see what we got. Fucker ran off, this guy comes in, tries to engage our artillery. He tries to engage our artillery like a bitch. He comes in to try and gauge our artillery like a bitch. Ah, oh. oh, I fucking hate all of you. Son of a bitch. Oh, why? Why did you do this thing? Alright, so this is our H20. Highlight and see A20 armor, it means he's good against armor. So why don't you come right here and finish this prick off? get this, I'll have five and I won't be able to get
the Spitfires have to have very little ammo. Seriously. Like the freaking Mustangs have a lot. I could go for a Mustang 636, but I already have one and I'd like to like have a variety of aircraft, troops from both sides of the you know, the Allied. Thank you. 
capture it. Good. Up. You, why don't you move here? See, there's a tiger up there. You don't see anything out here. That's the limit of his overrun attack right there. This guy's kicking ass, dude. at the top it said surprise. I'm guessing he tried to escape, but it didn't work out or something. I don't know.
because I wanted to get the most for my guys. Alrighty. Now, you. We know that there's a tiger over there. There's some shit over here. Got a pillbox over here. Okay, we'll probably push our way over here and then we'll swing right over here for the final area. So, start creeping in. There we go, that's what we wanted to see. We got those guys over there. Oh wow, these guys, boy, he's got Tenacious Defender and Battlefield Intelligence. I, I really wish I knew what these were, or what they did. You need to uh, chill for a bit, because you, I don't want to lose you if that's the case. I don't know if he gets to come with me over to the next level. Try, dude. I lost out. Dick. Good try. Alright. This guy's gonna go places. <laughs> now you They didn't do anything. Wow. They probably know they're about to get their ass handed to them.
range. You have a range of two. You bastard. We are running low on fuel as well. some armor over here so uh
actually getting experience. Yeah. Just checking. Back getting XP. Yeah, you guys are. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, we got our I got no ammo.
I'm sort of holding out to not capture this just yet. Just yet. I'm gonna save in case I fuck up with that. Because I can get points or experience with these guys and they can carry over to the next mission. So let's end the turn and see what happens. Nothing. Oh wait, they did get people there. Okay, well then, uh... No, don't do that. No, no, no. I, I kind of want him to have some experience. Let me think. How do we want to... Alright, well you bombard him. There's that. Well, nice work. Now we've got men and machines rolling into southern Italy. And rumor has it that Italy's on the verge of surrendering. Good going, Commander. All right, so based on how well you do the mission, how well you complete the mission, I should say, uh, the officer who was just talking to you will say a few things. So if you get a brilliant victory, he'll say something really nice. He'll say that you get, like, maybe a medal or something. If you did the normal victory like I did, this is what he'll say, and if you get a tactical victory, the one that's not so good, he's going to say, well, you know, uh, it took so long and this, that, that, but we're going to give you another chance or something. So. Commander, fruit cake? Just got it from the wife. Well, as you know, we've got a critical situation on our hands. Our troops, along with the Brits, have blasted into Normandy. Now we've got to drive inland. You and your men have got to smash through the kraut lines and take St. Lowe as fast as you can. If you don't get things moving, the Krauts will keep us pinned down here forever. Alright. So, new equipment. We got an 8-inch gun that we can purchase. We get a P-51D that we can get. A-26B, B-26G. And um, then we have an M-16. B-25H, there's the M-16, 76mm. B-25J, 90mm, any air, and an M12 self-propelled gun. Had we gotten a brilliant victory, we would have been awarded a special tank. Or a special something, I, I don't know. Alright. So this is what we currently have. you guys enjoyed i mean that's for you guys to enjoy it you would have to like this kind of game you know like strategy games uh you would have to like possibly my commentary my gameplay style uh it's something i like the game it makes me think a lot it's got military in it which i like and i'm a part of it's got history which i like and i've taken ex like quite a number of classes over at the university over it i just love history it's a strategy game that makes you think everything's always different from the next time to the last time you played. You know, it's never really the same. Uh, it's just real good. Like, there, there, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a guy I know, a friend of mine, he's in the military. He uses video games 
to help train his soldiers, to help school his soldiers in understanding uh, battlefield strategic maneuvers, positioning, uh, locations, even as far as understanding what tank, what like what vehicle or what thing is, you know, depending on what game he uses. Uh, I know last time I spoke to him, he, he said something. He was using Age of Empires, which obviously has no tanks in it, but you still get the concept of uh, artillery, right? Types of artillery. You get your bowmen, long bowmen. You got your catapults, uh, trebuchets. You got uh, infantry types of infantry. There's a cavalry. There's there's a bunch of stuff. He uses it, you know. There's buildings he builds and stuff like that. He shows and teaches them, and they actually learn from it, you know. Games like this does pretty well, you know. I think he uses a game like this as well. I think I remember him saying something about Panzer General. I don't know if he said Panzer General two, three, or one, or whatever, but you can see it in this game, you know. So there's that. I mean, like I know there were times that I was just sitting on a screen like this, talking and talking, but it's my methodology so to speak it's just my way of thinking of going in like oh i could try this but then there's this i could use this might be better or this and then you see there, there are ways that i do things and i hope you guys understand and can probably appreciate that so anyways we saved i hope you guys enjoyed you guys take care and uh have yourselves a good night